And what's going on, everyone? My name's Dom, and this is Completing the Circuit Podcast, Episode 8. Got my good friend Joe here. Hello. And uh, so, this week, I'm actually really excited. We are trying, uh, we've been trying week to week some new formats to kind of uh, keep the podcast interesting and not run out of things to talk about. And I think last week, we were actually able to really figure out a good system. So, we're going to be more focusing on the news um, and more current events. We're still going to get into more complex topics and we're going to still kind of stick to the theme of the channel, which is, you know, what is the industry doing and what are our thoughts on them, on what the industry is doing uh, per all the different perspectives that we have. So uh, we're going to start things off this week. I'm going to go ahead and run the news and stuff like that. And then as time goes on, we get used to it. Um, we'll get Joe back on, on the news uh, full time. So uh, the first story that I have for you, Joe, is uh, Apple has been in the news a lot this week. I know we talked about it earlier. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the whole uh, Epic Games debacle. Uh, them pulling the, uh, uh, what was it, Fortnite from the App Store. Google followed suit. So it's not just Apple that's doing it, but Epic Games has basically deployed an entire thing what against will, Apple. What will I do without Fortnite? <laughs> you're, not, you're not big into the Fortnite? What will I do, Tom? You know, I think you would just do exactly what you do now, which is not play Fortnite. <laughs> I'm going to miss it. Are you going to miss it? We should play a song. I, I, You know, I don't want to play a song. For I, Fortnite. What I, what I want to do is I want to kind of figure out, because I read something interesting today about um, some questions that the court's going to have for uh, Epic Games, which is, for one... Why are you doing this? Because if you you have you clearly have the ability to stop all this. So like, what is it you're trying to get out of this? That was the first thing. Wait, you said questions for Epic Games. Right? Yeah, question, questions for Epic Games. Because technically speaking, then why are they doing what? Why are they doing this whole thing? Pulling. A, get, okay, so for long story short, basically what happened this week is um, for for our listeners, uh, Epic Games went ahead and violated App Store and Google Play Store policy by. Um, selling their whatever their e bucks, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. um, for if they if they don't buy them in the app store, then they get like twenty percent off. Right, and that's that could be, I mean that could be pretty <laughs> that could be oh, pretty yeah. significant. Yeah, and of course people did it, and then within hours Google and Apple pulled pulled the apps from the app store. Immediately after, Epic Games had a lawsuit queued up against Apple. Basically, this whole antitrust thing that's been going on. Excuse me, with all of the, all the you know between Amazon and and stuff like that. So this is just another thing to add on to you know Apple's walled garden of of that people have been complaining about for a long time. A lot of developers don't want to pay the thirty percent, right? And so, um, yeah. So so all in all, now we're here, and Apple has been responding by now they're going to pull Epic's um, like. They're, it's 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 become this big thing. We can get more into like how the story's developed over time, mm -hmm. but this has been a big thing for a while. Um, with this whole thirty percent and 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 there's lots of opinions. I have been hearing both sides of the story. What both people are thinking. I've heard why you know, it's Apple stuff. It's their thing. They're a private company. They have the right to do it. It's always been thirty percent. I've heard other people say. I mean, now you know the thirty percent was initially designed to for maintenance, and they're pulling in billions and billions and billions. And it wasn't really designed for this model. I've, but now I, I heard this court, this courthouse, this this theoretical court question. The judge saying when they go to court and they do, and they they, you know, they're they're in it, right? Um, Epic has the ability to stop all this. Like they could just work with Apple, talk it out. But instead, they're kind of making this a big public fiasco, right? Um, and when I read that question, I was like, you know what? That's a really good point because at the end of the day, it's like Epic's the one that is technically causing this. Like they were fine before. And they could stop this at any time. So why is it that they're doing this? So I thought that question was pretty interesting. But I'm curious on your thoughts on just on just the the kind of that news story as a whole. What your like what your opinion is on 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 that whole thing? Why would they say that or 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 do this kind of thing? To me, is just to get Apple to or actually stick up for other developers. Really, I would say trying to get the percentage down, uh, bringing this in the forefront to show people, hey. Apple's charging 30% for all developers that want to be on the App Store. Um, I mean, is it is it that but per se? I I don't know. But it could be for them to, to go ahead and do this kind of thing. I mean, why else would they keep a lawsuit ready in, uh, in their back pocket 
and violate on purpose to, you know, bring a lawsuit. Out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they had it queued up. Right. So I don't understand why they wouldn't if it's not something to be like, hey, let's bring this up to the forefront. Let's bring this to the forefront for other developers and see if we can actually be that voice to speak. Yeah. At first, I thought it was that, but then it's kind of like, I think what they're doing, maybe there's just me thinking that they're... they're so there's, there's a bit of a history with Epic right now with kind of the stuff that they've been doing between their Epic Game Store and stuff. So I know they're they're really like, they're really trying to push a stronger business model, become more independent. Mm-hmm. I think that they can use that as an excuse to piggyback off of, but I think it's just like they just want that 30% or more of the money that they could be making off of their game. They're clearly not struggling. I think they're, they're worth... There's worth $17.3 billion. Is it worth $17.3 billion? Yes. And with that number... With seventeen point three billion, um, uh, if you think about it, with that kind of net worth, a lot of the developers that are on iOS or with Google, or whatever, they're not like they're not worth like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no. So Epic can actually take that stab and be like, well, if it fails, it fails, but we also have a huge following. Yeah. If you, I mean, if they're if Fortnite for them dies. I mean, it wouldn't die. They're still playing it on PC. This is the thing I, I well, don't... Well, it's not just PC. You got to think about it. They're still playing on Xbox and they're, they're still, still playing, playing on PlayStation. They so are. it's really not going to hurt them that much. Yeah, I don't think Honestly. it will. Honestly. Yeah. And and here's the other thing that this show does for Epic. In my opinion, what it does. It makes Apple look like the bad guy. It makes Epic look like a hero. Right. You know what I right. mean? Right. So what's going to happen is is now is that if, if in my thinking, if this lawsuit goes through, even if Epic loses... This is going to be a story of, to me, is like Robin Hood, right? Right. <laughs> Especially when when Apple today just hit $2 trillion. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's like <laughs> the big, bad, evil company that all right. these PC people don't like. Nobody likes Apple because they're evil, but everybody likes Apple because they make great products. I never understood. Yeah. It, it's... It, 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 and yeah, and now you got their, their $17.3 billion. Yeah. They're a billion-dollar company. Yeah. They're fine, but they're relatively... Worth, you know, yeah. Their worth is... It's huge. But again... They can still be considered Robin Hood because what? Robin Hood was rich, right? Right. And so he was the rich guy stealing from the rich for the poor. But no, Robin Hood wasn't rich. Was Robin Hood rich? Yeah, he was. Was Robin Hood a rich guy? Yeah. I thought Robin Hood was just an archer. Oh, I typed in Robin Hood. Well, according to the Kevin Costner movie, I apologize. It was. Oh, I'm going off of that. So gotcha, I apologize gotcha, gotcha. if I'm not going off of the history of Robin Hood. <laughs> He's a, he was an outlaw. Yeah. But according to the Kevin Costner movie of Robin Hood. Yeah. He the was, metaphor still holds. Yeah. Regardless. So it's, you know, uh, this is another. But for this instance, we'll just go with yours. Say mm-hmm. Robin Hood's not rich. For, for this instance, it's the. In, com- term, uh, in terms of richness and technology. What is it? Middle ground richness for for I Epic? would say relative to how much money Apple has in the bank. Just ignoring their, well, then they're their poor. market cap. I mean, yeah, they're everyone's poor. poor. Yeah, they're poor folk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> except Bezos. So He's, they're yeah. I there mean, so every they're... episode, I'm going to do that plug. Keep going. <laughs> and this is why your Amazon packages get delayed. Actually, um, they've been like really fast lately. Uh, I, gee, if, I wonder why. Hey, if Bezos is listening, maybe he's trying to make me happy. Maybe so, he wants a good review. So yeah, it's just them. <laughs> it's them giving giving back to the poor, and then the people are gonna get on board with Epic. They're gonna be fine. Oh yeah, I think they're, they're gonna, gonna be fine. I think they're gonna be just fine. And you know what? Even if it goes in Apple's favor, which I'm, after hearing that question. Now I can see why Apple would probably can they confidently feel like they can win because that right there basically says, okay, it's not that you don't have a point. It's not that you're not valid, but this whole thing that you're pulling, you could have just hashed this out and made things, but like, what is your, what's your end game here? What is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, did they, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Did Epic games ever respond? And say, well, that's just a theoretical question that the judge can ask. It was, it was brought up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I wish I could find the article about it. I think it was on nine to five Mac. Um, earlier today, actually, I'm not entirely sure where the article is. Hey, Aaron, could you try to look up that article for, if you text me that article, if you can happen to somehow find it in some magical world, I think you can find it on nine to five Mac. Um, regardless, even if we can't find it, the, um, yeah, that kind of, that kind of changed a little bit. Cause for a while there, I was thinking, okay, so you're Apple and in essence, especially with the second part of the story, which is Apple's pulling all the Unreal Engine Epic game like developer stuff out. So basically, if you're using Unreal Engine, if you're using Epic Games, if you're dealing with them, like you can't be with us. 
And Apple has, especially on mobile, way too big of a platform. Way too big of a platform to not, you know what I'm saying? To like pull that piece of the pie out. And Google, it's not like Google is not, you know, Google's not the, not the hero here either. You know, they pulled out too. No. And now with Android, you have the advantage of being able to go and find the executable elsewhere, right? Seems like this be a good thing for Android to do because after what? <laughs> well, it's like third party. And that's technically insecure. That's unsecure. Which yeah, but people I'm are throwing s- malware and stuff into. Yeah, but I'm just saying Android, if they stick with them, it would be a good thing for them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Google pulled them too. Google pulled them out of the Play Store as well. They violated Google. You cannot. Oh, go, I see. Yeah, well, you cannot. Yeah, Android a, can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can now. You can go to a website. You can go to Epic Games website uh, right now. Um, let's see. Fortnite. I don't even know how to spell Fortnite because I've never played this game. F O R T N I T E, I believe. Uh, P. Uh, what's it called? P K A P K A P K. Duh. P K A. Oh my God. A P K. Um. Yeah. So on Android, for those who don't know, um, if you're if you're on the iPhone front more of then you basically you can download apps and install them locally on your phone without going through a store per se so epic games i think you can literally download it from their website uh for android you can't do that for ios apple would never allow that but you can do it for ios or i'm sorry for android and uh you can do it through their website but you have to go and you have to like enable the phone to do it for security reasons they don't want you doing that but yeah. some you can do. And people can stick malware and stuff in there. So you got to be incredibly careful, right? It's a risk to reward thing. But then on the side note, did you see the other the other news article today? iPhones with <laughs> Fortnite on them are selling on eBay right now. I don't know if they're selling. This is what they're marked for. 10 Gs. I got to see if I could find that. I got to find that article as well. Yeah. Go on eBay. Hold on. Let's see if we can find that. Let's go on eBay. iPhone with Fortnite. Let's see. Not Fortnite. What is wrong with me? Fort. Fortnite iPhone. Let's see. Fortnite. iPhone with Fortnite. I hope someone pulled it down. Uh, let's see. Here's an iPhone XS. Fifteen hundred dollars with one bid. Here's another one for a grand. Here's another one for eight thousand dollars. All right. Let's see. Aaron sent me some Japanese. I'm not exactly sure. What? Here we go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this is this is ridiculous, right? It's like the same thing with uh, we were talking about this recently with um, uh, what's it called? What's that stupid bird game? Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird. The iOS uh, phones were, yeah. with Flappy Bird on them were selling like crazy. Like this is nuts. Like nobody could possibly be buying these. Um, and you know they just put they're just throwing like, here it is here it is here it is yeah an iPhone eight plus with Fortnite, ten grand. And I'm a little bit. This is so, this this particular price here is so outrageous. If I look at the views for this one, let me see if I can find it. Sometimes eBay tells you how people have seen this one. Well, I don't know. This is this guy is never going to sell this. Um, regardless, it's after reading that after reading that thing here. Apple's lawyers appointed Epic may face two hard questions. So here we go. So this one's on nine to five Mac. Uh, this one was reported by Ben Lovejoy. That is an awesome last name. Uh, let's see here now. Corey's almost certainly going to ask Epic, let's see, first, why it wants to prevent Apple removing its apps from the App Store when the game company itself has the power to resolve that problem. That's the first question. And the second one is, the judge will want to know why Epic is singling out Apple for the injunction, which again makes sense because Google did the exact same thing. So what is it that they're trying to pull here? And those are good, fair, like objective questions. Like what is their, their intent on doing all this? Right. Mm. Um, and that flipped me around a little bit. Cause for a while there, I thought to myself, you know what does Apple, is it possible Apple might have too much power? Like they could just basically kill your business in one flip of a switch. Right. If you think about it for whatever reason, let's say Tim cook just got mad at candy. He just hated candy, right? Like he, he had a, he had a dream where, you know, he was Willy Wonka, but he didn't get the golden ticket or something. I don't know. He was just, he was just mad one day. And he said, to, you know, done with Candy Crush. We're getting rid of it. Flips the switch on Candy Crush. I mean, that's a huge chunk of their business. Their income's done with a flip of a switch. And it's a privately owned company. Yeah. They have the right to do it. They do. So at one point I thought, does Apple have too much power? But then it's like, they're not really doing that. They did that in response to something that Epic Games did on purpose to intentionally get around something that Apple's been doing since the beginning of the App Store. Right. That's all I got on this one. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what what your thoughts on all everything I just said are, but that's that 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 has made me flip back around to thinking 
this might be a little bit more ridiculous. Epic is making this out to be bigger than it actually is. I don't know. I mean, I'm on Apple side, to tell you the truth. What if it was, well, what apps do you use, though? What are, like, your primary apps? Like, what was an app you loved or Callie loved? Uh, she's listening she uses facebook she uses i don't really know <laughs> i guess we're i mean we're not big i'm not a big super big app person aaron what are your favorite apps what are, what's some of your instagram no nah, it's still facebook though but you play that mario kart game right a lot so she plays mario i think we gotta get i think we gotta get aaron a camera and a microphone what do you think I agree. Yeah. I think in the next episode, you guys are going to get to see Erin. we got her stuffed behind a soundboard right now, and she's drawing. She her... She's drawing ice cream cones. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, she's a special girl. I mean, <laughs> well, she is very special. She does all, she does all of our AV stuff. For this her. is also a completing the circuit, not completing the Erin. So um, we're going to get off that subject. Well, then, you know, there's, there's some layers there, but... <laughs> Outside of any of completing of Aaron's, um, <laughs> like I heard, it, I heard an interesting argument from Aaron actually uh, earlier in the week as well when the story first broke out, or something along the lines. Apparently, another company didn't want to pay the thirty percent. They're new; mm. they wanted to play their app, and Apple approved it. And then Apple realized it made a mistake and said, "Oh no, you you can't have this. Like you have to give us the thirty percent. You have to set up your app to do that." And then they apparently went off and said, "Well, that's not fair." You know, Netflix doesn't have to pay 30%. And we're basically doing the same thing. And this is true. Who was the company? Oh, I don't remember who it was called. Aaron, do you remember who it was called? Uh, she's looking it up. Yeah. It's going to be really hard. It's a similar It's a similar story. Here's the thing. I don't agree with... Here's my, 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 my thing. Whatever is said... Whatever is said at first... Is so you were telling me earlier uh, it's not a contract. There's no contract signed, right? Um, it's I mean it's a it's a like a EULA a user license agreement I believe. Okay. I don't think it's like a legal, you know, uh, having it. Uh, what's it called when a lawyer when you get it? Um, whatever it's called, they put the stamp yeah, on it. It says yeah. it's, it's legit. It's, so it's not. I mean, that that's the uh, okay. So either way, every company is they're screwed because there's no there is no notarized or notarized. Yeah. So there's no, uh, it's a it's a license agreement. So a company like that that was told one thing, and then they Apple goes back on that and says, no, you gotta do thirty percent. Well, now that company can't fight anything because there's no signature, there's no nothing. It's just in the license agreement. Right. Do I agree with that? No. It should be okay. Apple says one thing. So if it says no, you don't have to pay the thirty percent, and Apple realizes they screwed up. Well, that's on them, not them. Not the other company. Right. So I don't agree with that. But the whole thing with Epic, I agree with. They knew Apple said, hey, right. 30%. Epic agreed to it for, right. for for a while. Now they have an issue. No, that shouldn't be the issue. Right. Um. Well, honestly, I think what it, if anything comes out of this, uh, the government should step in and say, you know what? No more license agreements, uh, contracts. Oh, man. That would be the biggest tech battle in the history of tech battle. This is getting to a scary point between the the recent Twitter hack and all this political stuff that's involved with Facebook and Twitter and then this antitrust stuff with Bezos. And I really, really, really want to just say more about the Bezos thing. I'm not going to. And all the other stuff, like, it's getting to the boiling point where regulations are going to start coming in. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to happen. And it needs to happen. It needs to happen. If they put in the contracts, what's the worst thing they can happen, right? So there's still... You have someone sign it, they sign it. Apple would be it be smart on Apple's end to do it because then they can lock it in for so many years. I mean they could technically lock it. You technically agreed to the terms. But it's not contract. So they can it's, pull out any time. I don't know exactly how EULAs work. If Apple can change it without any repercussions, like they're doing with that one company, mm -hmm. then that company should be able to leave anytime they want. Uh, let's see. Hold on. While while a EULA is not a binding contract in and of itself, anytime a user downloads or installs software developed by someone else, they're using a tool protected under copyright laws. So in essence, the EULA that you would sign to deploy your app gives Apple legal protection 
not to the de- not to the degree that something like a a straight up contract would have like between like an actor and a movie studio or whatever you want to call it um but it does give them legal protections basically saying this is our thing here is your license on how to use it how it's not to, how it's not meant to be used and everything else here's the terms and as long as you don't violate those terms then we don't have to you know we don't have to engage any of our legal protections in order to you know deal with your behavior so in essence they deploy their app they they you have to sign the eula right you have to agree mm-hmm. to the eula you do that every single time so in order to be able to i mean google has one too right so in order to be able to get your app up you have to you, that you just, that's what you have to do and then you violate it i would say in the case of that smaller company google screwed up or apple screwed up right and they put the app in they, they weren't supposed to all right fine then leave it that way until they update it on their next update no then it's got to get patched out no you leave that alone you screw it up you leave it alone that's not their fault you leave it alone completely wait wait, wait. i think we're saying the exact same thing no you're saying apple on and the next update in the patch then you can get your 30 percent back yeah. right i'm saying no mm. Because that. no, because it, honestly, if it's one of those things where again, I'm gonna be on those people's side. You said one thing, not my fault that you made a mistake. And even if you give me the update, you're not gonna charge me more because you agreed to this number. Well, if you had to pick between one and two, because it's Apple's way or the highway in this case, mm-hmm. so it's thirty percent now, or it's thirty percent when you when you push out your next update. Again, that's still. I'm not saying it's right, but it's. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't have it both ways. It's either it's either always thirty percent, it's sometimes thirty percent, depending on certain conditions, or it's never thirty percent. But you know you know Apple would push an update real quick. No, 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 no. You update your own app. So I'm saying these guys they release their version one app. Okay. They want to push a patch, you know, version one point oh one. Well then you gotta keep an eye on it. The other thing I'm concerned about too is if Apple went ahead and let this one slide, like their whole business structure as far as the app store goes is supposed to be around security. I mean, we know that. Apple's mm-hmm. been big in the security thing. Like something like that slip? I don't know. The thing is, it didn't let it slip. They caught it. Well, they caught it after, but it was already right. in the store and people were downloading it and using it. That means right. that's code that wasn't well, yeah. fully checked running on your phone. Oh, I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Well, then... I mean, that's a different... That's like a, that's that's, a, that's kind of a bit of a, of a stretch of a topic. I just find the whole it's thing It's not really a stretch, honestly. Was security today? You need to oh, be yeah. on the A-game... Absolutely, I would say, but like in conjunction with this particular well, news yes, article. But I'm when I'm, I don't know. I mean, obviously, if I had to pick, I would pick. Yeah, I'll pay the thirty percent after the update. Mm-hmm. But again, it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't. But it should have been, technically speaking, my app. By technically speaking, it should have been thirty percent. Or the first. it's tough, right? Right. You, it, it should be if you're gonna if you want the thirty percent, then you should have said that the first time. Not giving me this number and then charge me later. They did. On. Apple made a mistake and right. then they went to pull it down. And so that shouldn't just... be a developer's fault or be on his. I agree. You know, I, mean, I know you agree. I'm I just, agree. I'm making it. I'm just sick of these companies doing these things where they say mm-hmm. one thing, they go back. They yeah. say another thing, they go back. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not even tech stuff. That's every company. Oh, that's yeah. everything that we we deal with. Absolutely. And they're, they have so much legal protection and so much money to get that legal protection that they're able to do stuff like this. I mean, and that's why day, contracts need to come back old-fashioned meetup. They still have old-fashioned no, contracts. No, but I'm saying is these apps, that no more, n- none of this stuff. I'm talking about old-fashioned, right? Lawyers involved, everything. Then that means every single Facebook account, some, a lawyer would have to come to your house for you to sign. Every single YouTube account, every single, every single Eula would have to be converted into an account. I don't know about you. I'm not going through all that work for that stuff. And then those companies die. That's, that's the problem. The Eula is just a license agreement all it is is just simply saying here's the terms for this stuff for example we are letting you use this iphone right you're using the software on this iphone which allows you to take pictures however if you take pictures of children you know in ways that they shouldn't be taking care like in illegal ways we are not responsible for that action if they didn't put that in there court could argue apple gave me the ability to do it you know what I'm saying? Stuff gets messy real quick. I know, but all I'm trying to say is when it comes to just the business side, not, I understand the whole service with people, you know, customers or whatever, but they can keep the UI part for that. I'm just talking about the initial startup of that app to be on iOS. You think it should be like a legal thing? Like, exactly. a, like a straight up That's two people? That's all I'm saying. 
That would cost Apple too much money. They probably wouldn't do it. They're freaking worth $2 trillion. Exactly. They're worth $2 trillion because they just have EULAs that do the work for them. I hear what you're saying. I do. It's just, it's one of those things where. But it wouldn't be. No, I'm not saying this is Apple's decision, though. I'm saying that people need to step in, the higher ups, government, whatever. And the regulations. Happen. And that's what it's looking like. Um, but now, then. It, because, but, it's it's scary territory, man. But it's scary territory. Companies then can turn around and be like, all right. We have to do these contracts? Fine. Now, guess what? You have a bare minimum you have to do be with us for about five years. Yeah, they're Locked going to come it. back with some... They're going to come, they definitely will. come back with some response. Right. 100%. But... And they're going to end up punishing the consumers for it because their bottom line is their bottom line. It's either way, it's a lose-lose situation. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. But there needs to be some way of, okay, if these people are developing things, they should be able to make money. And they should be able to keep that money. 30% to me. Why are you getting 30% maintenance? It used That was originally the idea. You buy an app. Yeah. It was a dollar, $5. Apple got their 30 And that was it. That was it. That was the rest. That was the what, end of it. What else is in that 30% now? Basically, almost every single transaction. So subscriptions, in-app purchases, basically in-app purchases in the initial app uh, purchasing. So if the app is, let's say, $10 mm-hmm. or whatever, let's say it's free. And then you get, you know, people buy coins or whatever, then mm-hmm. that's 30% off there. Monthly subscriptions, 30% off there. I don't think things like if, for example, like like websites like eBay and Amazon, since that's not technically something you buy in the app, but it's not for the app. It's not something that the app participates in, like like you would get coins or points or something like that, 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 improve, that changes your app experiences. Like, I need dog food. Let me go ahead and, you know, let me hit Bezos up. And then, you know, he sends you dog food. That's a little bit different. So I don't think, I think there's an argument to be made for, even though you're buying something, you're not buying something for the app. Um, but anything like that. So eBay and Amazon wouldn't be affected by that. But Spotify and Netflix, you can't make, you can't set up services like new accounts. Um, or I, I don't believe you can make new, you, you can't subscribe for premium um, uh, in, in the iOS app because of that 30% thing. Let's see. How to pay for Spotify premium in the iOS app. Let's see how to pay. Want to upgrade your free Spotify account to a premium one? Looking where to sign up in your iPhone or iPad app? Follow along. Spotify use to allow users to pay within the iOS premium plan. However, August 2018, the company began restricting new accounts to only be able to upgrade through the website. And this is a way to get around Apple's 30%. Now you might be asking yourself, okay, well, why is Spotify not getting pulled down? They basically right here for this story on 9 to 5, they got all the stories on this stuff, right? Um, this was back in January 2019, right? So Michael Potluck, Potuck, Potuck, excuse me, uh, he reported this, and they're basically doing the same thing Epic did. Now, is their response to Apple's response wasn't to go ahead and nick Spotify? It was like I was saying to you the other day. You get rid of Netflix on iOS, you're losing customers. Mm-hmm. You get rid of Spotify on iOS, you're losing customers. Look what's happening with that WeChat thing. Another story of the week, mm-hmm. right? So the WeChat, uh, let's see, Apple, iOS. In China. In China, which right? Is 17%. Isn't yes. It? Yeah. It's something like 17%. So let's see here now. So on CNET, what do we have here? In share, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. 17% users use that in China or something like that. It's something 17... 17% of, if I can find that or, article. 17% of iOS sales, I believe, is what I read, yeah. are from China. Yeah. And 98% of Chinese I, chi, uh, Chinese iOS users would not would stop using it if this WeChat thing happens. And that's not Apple's fault. Right. That's, that's a whole you know political thing. But yeah. you can see how getting rid of an, a popular app, and they're out the door. My thing is, is uh, with that whole thing, there is other apps. I, I, I don't, I've never used that app, so I don't know everything that's entailed. Mm-hmm. But if it is what I'm thinking it might be, you have apps like Fiverr, WhatsApp, things like that. Where, okay, so my dad lives in the Philippines, right? Mm-hmm. Viber, I can call him in the Philippines and not be charged at all on my phone. He can do it to the U.S. and not be charged. Anything. You can message on there and everything. Yeah. And that's what it sounds like this app might be as well. I Like, again, I don't know all the features on it, but it sounds like the same thing Viber does. I think 
there's two there's two things here um i know that in china the restrictions on what you can and cannot have even digitally and like the internet and stuff like that i don't think you can get like facebook and stuff out there i don't think you can get google out there they control the internet i think the whole country has like two public ip addresses for the whole country then it gets like distributed through a whole bunch of networking stuff to the citizens wechat is made as is tiktok or at least is owned by the chinese government the problem that the u.s government is having is that those can that stuff can potentially be used to spy on u.s citizens all of that aside that i think is where the problem is and so i don't know if they have any alternatives that makes sense I think that could that be not, without getting super, super crazy into it. That's what I think that, that's what lies the problem. Cause you're right. They could easily just use WhatsApp. Uh, was it called Fiverr? What do you Viber. Viber. Um, you could use FaceTime. And I mean, there's, there's plenty of ways to communicate with people Skype, but I don't think China allows those apps to be used. I think that they want to be able to control everything. I, again, I could be totally wrong with that one, but I think that's where, that's where it goes. So that's tough. That's yeah. tough. So imagine, can you just imagine all of the bored commuters, all of the, you know, the students, the, 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 you know, the lonely girlfriends uh, and boyfriends who distract themselves with, you know, Netflix whenever, you know, they don't have anything else better to do. Netflix and chill, dude. Like that's a thing. So you can see that Netflix uses something like 30% of the internet, or like the total usage at one point, at one moment. So side. I checked up um, Viber in China. Mm -hmm. Viber is blocked in China. There you go. Um, but it does say this. It says here, there are uh, ways to still be able to access it. And the best one is probably still to download and install a VPN on your smartphone. Mm -hmm. uh, since Viber is blocked in China, the only way to access it is to use a VPN that still works in China. Right. If that's only one VPN and everyone jumps on it, yeah, good luck trying to get through. Right. Yeah, that's gonna. Suck. That's number one. A lot of people don't even want to go through that hassle. They can just go get an Android phone, whatever. Right? Yeah. That's plenty of Chinese Android phones. So fifteen percent of the internet consumption, or maybe this might be even the United States. Uh, fifteen. Let's see. Fifteen percent of the streaming video giant consumes fifteen percent of total downstream volume of traffic globally. So if Apple, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know what? I'm I'm also. Like they, I think they're stuck, and that's the problem that I have is it's inconsistent. Either, either make exceptions, or don't. I understand your bottom line's your bottom line, but I heard a great idea for like a tiered system. You know, the more you make, the less percentage gets taken out because you Netflix doesn't need Apple to. All it needs the App Store for is to get the app installed on people's phones. People know what Netflix is. They don't need ads on on the on 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 the App Store. New developers might though. And I would say the thirty percent now could help use, um, could help with their, um, you know, help getting their app out there, discovered, so on and so forth, giving them the data that they need. You know, that thirty percent could be used to pay for the tools. Like, yeah, it's a bigger chunk, but it's a smaller amount of money as a whole, and they need the help. So it's kind of like a trade thing. You hit a certain tier, you hit a certain level. It's like, okay, well now we're going to hit you up with ten percent. Maybe let's say fifteen percent. Fine. Let's say, just say just for, you know, just just for the hell of it, fifteen percent. I mean, why not? Fortnite doesn't need the help. Spotify doesn't need the help. Netflix doesn't need the help. It, Bezos don't need the help. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it, like, <laughs> no, think about it. Two tiers, right? If you're new, you're completely new, no one heard of you, 30%, right? Depending on your income, the more you make, there's it starts you off at the 30. Like, if you're, in, you know, and then when you hit a certain threshold of income, it kicks you down to 15 you get less access to advertisement unless you want to pay more or whatever, something, right? Not to get too technical, but that would be, I think, a way Apple could go about doing it. Makes a bunch of people happy and it also like changes the whole marketing strategy of what the percentages mean. I don't know, maybe, that's just me. I think that's a good idea. I heard something like that. You'll still have people crying. Of course, you're, you're never gonna be, it's like no. you said on, on with Big Sur and the, and, the, and the damn icons, you're never gonna yeah. be able to make anybody happy, no. everybody happy, it's just not possible. Man. So. In, circle back real quick again. Sorry, I looked it up. WhatsApp is also blocked in China. So yeah, everything's blocked. Yeah, and that's the problem. You know, that's the... <laughs> Facebook is blocked. It's Yeah, yeah, Facebook's blocked. Everything's blocked. The only way you can do it is that, and that's because it's controlled by the Chinese government. So there's, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot to digest here. And I would say... 
as far as how it goes and where it goes, I don't know if Apple's response is necessarily appropriate with, you know, destroying all of the unreal, like not destroying, but basically saying, oh, well, we're going to completely and utterly remove as much of our, in, much of your income as we possibly can to make it so you can't fight us in the court with it, with pulling their Epic Games account the way that they're doing. Business isn't fair. It's not, man. It's war. It is war. That's literally war. You're going against your your company's worth seventeen point three billion. That's cute. Apple could just go in and buy. Exactly. They could say, "Here's a twenty five billion dollar acquisition offer," yeah. and that's poof to it's them. It's gone. It's nothing. And then right. they, you know what? To be honest with you, I actually wouldn't mind that. The um, Unreal Engine is quite incredible. It is. Right. So many games are made with Unreal Engine now. Yeah. And so I could see. But know, they ain't gonna bail out. They ain't going to do that. It's like I said a long time ago, and I, re- I read a, an article fairly recently about... No, they're not going to do that, but uh, especially not now. But, I mean, if you think about it, right? So you have an $18 billion valuation, and go- and Apple just says, just for just for just the fun of it, right? $25 bill. $25 billion. We get your whole thing. Ooh. Well, I mean, what would you say, right? Like, you are the owner... So you know, you basically get an extra 50% of what your company's worth and you don't deal with this problem anymore. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the 30%. You don't have to worry about the 30%. Yeah, and all the employees will get because Apple, and this is another argument against Apple, is you have Spotify, they get hit with 30%. Apple then can say, well, we see that this is working because we see its performance in the App Store. So we're going to make our own music thing. Which you would think it makes sense, right? They have iTunes. So it's not like completely out of the question. But then you have Apple TV+. Plus competes with netflix but they are not under the same 30 percent strain well no of course not right because it's theirs and that's where some of the unfairness it's not unfair Mm, not even not even a little bit Eh, nope yeah tiny i you know Eh. what maybe i'm just a jackass because (laughs) i honestly don't sometimes no (laughs) no, I, i am i honestly when it comes to business you have to be a hard ass right you need to be that guy that person that i Apple's in to make money. Mm. They're in there to make money. Yeah, they're here to make our lives easier, but their bottom do, bottom line is the money. The bottom dollar? That's fine. I know but yeah, I know. <laughs> I but the, gonna say that. the bottom line is money. <laughs> yeah. Every company is like that. It doesn't matter who. It, you could be the nicest company in the world. You could be like a, a Canadian company or a Sweden company. Guess what? Apple's going to kick you back to Canada, and they're going to kick you back to Sweden. It doesn't know. matter. I think they have a great relationship with Ikea. <laughs> 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 but it doesn't matter. I mean, Apple is, they're showing to me, you know what? I'm going to say it right here on this. The, Apple has balls. They, they do. They got balls. Oh, they do. They and do. they're not afraid no. to do that. Yeah. Hold well, Let me see your phone really quick. You have your phone on you? Let me see your phone. Your iPhone. I'm using mine to record, so I can't use mine. Let me see. You need it online? Yeah. No, I got a thing that I want to start doing. I did this the other night. No, I don't even need to unlock. I just need to take the take it out of the case. Give me the phone. Just give, oh. me, yeah, give me the phone. No, slide it over here. I'll take it up. That way you don't get it damaged. No. What do you mean get it? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah let me see the phone. Every I time think... Apple... Okay. You know what? Like, I can forgive. Okay. I can forgive. We're becoming a more dynamic show, right? We're getting more comfortable. Now it's like, I don't care. I don't need to be... I don't need to be all super professional in front of the microphone, right? No. I know you know what I'm about to do. Apple, I like you guys a lot. You make great, cool products. And I have one issue... Now, you're not going to give me promotion. I know this is kind of coming out of left field, but I'm going to let it come out of left field because I have been working diligently on my Galaxy Note 10 review with the Galaxy Note Ultra that got that that's launching tomorrow, actually, because we always record this the night before we launch these on Friday. Um, And I did a part when I was talking about their camera bump. Is my yeah. Aaron kicking my, my phone? Dom really likes the camera bump, guys. He loves the camera bump. So bumps. when I do... Awesome. He enjoys them. So if you're not watching this um, on YouTube, right, if you're listening, um, the Galaxy Note 10 is a phone that you could say competes with. It sits in the same world as the as the uh, the iPhone 11. And the way that they incorporated their camera bump, like proportionally, everything is nice. Right? It works so, perfect. Still a camera bump, right? Yeah, but it's not like... And it's got... It's got... It's a little bit. Oh, no. You're going to do that. But I saw that the iPhone 12 wasn't going to get ProMotion. And I said I wasn't going to buy this phone if it didn't have ProMotion. And I was going to get the 12 because it has ProMotion, but now it's not going to have ProMotion. So now, okay, that's your camera bump making making all that noise. So I'm not going to defend you as much as I normally would and be a fanboy 
until you fix this because I don't know what it is about this thing that bothers me so much. Here you go, man. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to start making that noise every single time they do something that drives me crazy. I'm going to literally make a sound effect on my computer. I thought you were going to say that anything that makes you mad, you're going to do that. Just tap on your phone. For now. We'll see what happens. That's going to be my my no-no apple. That's going to be my sour apple sound. Granny sour apples? My granny sour apples. That's right. <laughs> I'm an old, aggravated man with this. No, it's you know what? It's like I see both sides and it's tough because... Here's my fear. And at the end of the day, business is business and they need to duke it out and spend whatever money they got to spend. Don't roll it back onto the customer because whenever something like this happens and someone, you could say like exploits the system to try to get a loophole to, to you know, to, to mess things up, to change things, it always ends up firing back on the customer. And then we pay more. We get worse stuff. We have to, you know what I'm saying? We get stuff taken away. How do you stop that? It's very simple. Companies need to stop giving, no, no, no. caring about their bottom line. I'm talking about not companies. I'm talking about us. How do we stop that? We stop buying the products. Once Apple sees their stocks going down and they start seeing sales going down and they see, start seeing some off-brand. Oh, yeah, they'll make the change. I'm using I'm using this as an example. No one take this as a word. But let's say HTC, they go skyrocketing. Yeah. Or, or LG, and they go skyrocketing. You know, I think what's funny about Now that you mentioned that, uh, LG and HTC... Don't have a freaking camera bump. I could be wrong. I'm sorry. Keep going. I just wanted to say that. That felt really good you to say. And, you and Jeff Bezos and you and camera bumps. That's my new thing to complain about. Ah. Jeff Bezos is a camera bump. <laughs> <laughs> he is. It's like it's necessary, but you just you just know it's not quite right. It's just you feel that right in the back of the phone. It's like everything about this is great. What? Mr. Bezos, if you are watching this, you have my permission to delay all packages. For I'm telling you, he's going to start spitting in my packages. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to start getting packages. I just got Aaron, or he'll just go the, the and then lock crossing. it right in there. I'm telling you, no, his thing is going to be. I can totally see it in South Park, right? Like he's just going to troll me. He's yeah. the only one listening to the podcast. He's going to make it so no other phone's going to hack it. No other phones can listen. Just him. And then he's going to start sending messages in, in, the, in my Amazon deliveries. And he's going to like, like I'm telling you, he's going to throw $100 in there like every single time. Like, Basil's was here. Like, here's a, like it's a hundred bucks. Like, like a hundred bucks is an insult. Like, it's just, you know, like you plebeian. Here's a hundred dollars. No, you know what would be funny? He just leaves a penny in every single package. I almost feel like that would be like, right? Because like at first I would think, yeah, something like the smallest nomination to cash. But it's kind of like the idea that he has so much money. Well, yeah, a hundred. Like a, like a million is a penny to Here's a, like, here's a hundred yeah. <laughs> and it's like he thinks he's insulting me hundred dollars in singles right <laughs> yeah yeah and rolls he yeah. just throws it at me <laughs> you know okay so I, I, all of that being said that's gonna be my new thing with the camera bump and 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 with this this whole thing feels like a camera bump to me and i can't figure out if i like it or not I, you don't like it I can already tell you. But I can't like figure it. out if, if I if I should care or not because like you, you do care. I don't care about Fortnite. No, what I'm saying is you care because, like you said, you're afraid for the customers, you're afraid for the people. Well, I, I and obviously that means you care, and I agree. But here's the thing. Again, it. I don't think Apple will be that dumb. I don't think. I don't, I don't think, think so either. I don't think Google is going to be that dumb. Hmm. And Google does have ways, and that's through even though their phones don't sell, their security sells. Their nest. This is true, but that's a tiny, tiny part. Their biggest thing is selling ads on their on, on Google.com. Yeah, but w no one's going to stop using Google. I mean, no one's going to stop. This using is Google. true. This is true. Who's gonna, where are we going to go to? Bing. I was thinking, <laughs> it's Ask Jeeves still around. Ask Jeeves. <laughs> I bet you it is. Nope. Oh, because I spelled it wrong. I remember that back in the day. Yeah. No, that's my fear. And yeah, it's still around. But I, I, it's not gonna, Ask it's not gonna come down that way. I think. I hope not. No. Apple. They have, to me, they have some ways to go to make up to their customers. They have things to make up to their customers for. I mean, let's say before, what, twenty nineteen? What was it? When was the last time the butterfly? <laughs> Oh, the butterfly key. Oh, 2018, right? Yes, they in they introduced that the the butterfly switches in 2016. The 2016 no, I know, MacBook. but it stopped in 2018, right? 2019. 2019. This, the 2020. Stopped. Yeah, the 2020 MacBook. Okay, so you had there. all those people buy those MacBooks for the butterfly thing. It was a piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. You had three years of garbage. 
So what you I'm saying is this. Apple, if you're listening, you have three years of making this up to us. And I'm going to start the three years now with your new iPhone, 2020. So you have till 2023 till you can make any other stupid changes you want. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, I... I, I <laughs> I, I, I just don't. I don't see Apple doing that. Um, they have, they have, they have their, they have a good goal going out. Mm-hmm. Big Sur, iPhone twelve, their iPads. Hopefully Siri gets updated and my Apple. You know what? I am. I'm not gonna lie. That is honestly the only thing that I'm hoping. I'm a little bit excited about is maybe Siri's gonna get better with this whole super you know question. What? It, thing. it doesn't have to be. It, it, it shouldn't be a maybe. It's a must. It it has to. How be. much was that HomePod? Three hundred. Three fifty. Okay, you spent three hundred and fifty dollars on, and and you have four of them. Yeah. Well, one was my dad, and then. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. So you have three of them. Yeah. So you spent a grand, over a grand on HomePod. Yeah. For a thing, that's stupid. It's very stupid. So I spent two hundred and thirty dollars mm-hmm. on a Google Home Max, mm-hmm. and. It's smarter. Mm-hmm. They're very smart. What I'm saying is, is Google shouldn't be better. No, not by this much of a distance. No, I get that Google has like a because of their search engine, they have the yes. ability to know more. But, but this Siri is ridiculous. Does the same damn thing. When I say six forty five, set an alarm for six forty five. That doesn't mean turn on the bathroom lights. <laughs> Those aren't the same actions. What is that? I will say to Siri, I have a routine. Yeah, bedtime. Right, yep. and it dims certain lights and all this other stuff, right? Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. says that it can't compute. It literally says, "I can't do that right now." Yeah, it's like, "What are you busy with?" But I can else? find it. Here's the thing: I can do it on my phone, and this is the part I never understood. I know I'm talking fast. That's how you know I'm frustrated. Mm-hmm. If I tell the HomePod, which is Siri, to do an action, there are times where she says, "I can't do it." But if I do it on my phone mm-hmm. with Siri, did mm-hmm. in Siri, right? She can do it. So I don't know. Like, I don't write that kind of code. I write code. I write enough to know that something is very, very wrong when this, which should be fundamentally the same software. How long have Siri been around? 2012. Was it 12? Yeah. iPhone 4S. Okay. So 2012, we're Did in it? 2020. That's eight years of Siri. Mm-hmm. When has she ever been good besides the first time she came out? Ooh. And even then. Even then, that's still cool. Oh, no. Siri was really good when she first came out. Well, at the time, there was something else like it. But right. I remember you could ask Siri, where, where, can I, where can I hide a dead body? Yeah, she can do... Swamps, yeah. dumpsters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, but she's she's good with random stuff. I wouldn't even say she's good with random stuff. I think they just keep changing it. And I think... I think What it is, it's lazy writing. To me, when that. Steve... Because Steve Jobs died in 2009... Or no, 2013. Oh, okay, 2013. Yeah, iPhone okay. 5. Okay, okay. Rest in peace to Steve Jobs. But, so no wonder Siri worked like that in <laughs> yeah. 2012 because yeah. Steve Jobs was around. Mm-hmm. Now look at it. You know, I would think... Because this, if Steve Jobs was around, oh, this yeah. would never happen. Oh, no. This, this the me, camera can... bumps... <laughs> the, <laughs> the camera bumps wouldn't happen. The, the home pods wouldn't be like this. Everything would be flawless. Yeah. It'd be flawless and it would work great. Yeah, because he wouldn't let it out otherwise. Tim Cook, look, Tim Cook is not really a leader in my eyes. If you look at his Apple uh, in his uh, yeah. during the keynotes, what happens? Yeah, he shows up on the screen. Hey, I'm Tim Cook and I'm here to talk about And here to talk about it is Ron. Well, okay. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yes, he definitely gives stage time to his other to the to the other people way more than Steve Jobs did. Steve Jobs did the demos, he did everything and he was great about it. Um but Tim Cook doesn't come out and and show me that he's this leader. He really no, doesn't. He doesn't. I'll tell you what, the one guy that shows me he's a leader is the dude who's the guy Remember the woman uh at the that showed the BMW with the key, right? Yeah. Okay. The guy before her, it was like a guy with gray hair. Oh, kinda. um, oh my God. He's uh, I know what his name is too. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. Hold on. I can find it. It was on MKBHD. What's his name? Um, Federighi or something like that. Uh, Apple answers. Let's see. It is Craig Federighi. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. He, to me, even though I know he's not, but he looks more like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's really enthusiastic about it. Yeah. Yeah. Tim comes up, and today we are going to talk about the new iOS. It's like, okay, great. You're going to put me to sleep. So, yeah, I think Tim Cook needs to go. I'm I'm tired of him. Uh, I know he came after Steve Jobs, but honestly, no. But he was trained by Steve Jobs. He's basically raised. Who else would do it? Like, who else could do it? You know what I think needs to happen? Scott the Rock. Co- oh, my. The Rock. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Dwayne The Apple. Or the Kevin Rock. Hart. All right. All right, guys. <laughs> Today, <laughs> so we got a new iPhone. <laughs> We're going to update it. We're going to update it to the new iOS. You know who? I don't yeah. know if you remember this. Um, from old keynote, you had uh, Scott Forstall. Now, he's the one who was responsible for Apple Maps. And he basically resigned when Apple Maps was causing so many problems for people who were using it, believing that it was working, and they were getting sent out into weird fields and all this other stuff. And he was the one who ran iOS with Steve Jobs for the longest time. And then Steve died, and then Tim Cook basically said, you know, you need to send out an apology for this whole Apple Maps thing. And he said, I don't think we need to do an apology. Just like Steve Jobs didn't apologize for the antenna gate thing, he said, look, Steve Steve Jobs came out and said, here's a problem with our antennas for the iPhone 4. So we're going to go ahead and send you this antenna band thing. We're going to give you a free case and call it a day. He didn't like come out and apologize, I guess, was his was Scott Forstall's argument. But I had the feeling in my mind that what iOS was doing and all the direction it was always going, and that just that section of Apple was better with Scott Forstall. Johnny Ive took over it, made everything flat and weird. I didn't like it. And then it, it, like iOS tried to become this like artistic what thing. To him? Uh who was Scott Forstall? Yeah. Uh I don't know what happened to him. Uh, but I would like to see him come back. But you know what? Here's the other thing too. Um, a lot of the designs that you're that you're familiar with with Apple was Johnny Ive. So you had Scott Forstall, Johnny Ive, Tim Cook doing whatever whatever the hell he was doing. There was a team, right? And now you had Phil Schiller, who I believe has who I believe has just left Apple as well. Um, advances to Apple Fellow, or he stepped down from some position at Apple. So you know what the team is just missing. And there's just a lot of people that there, there's just there's so many things changing. At the very least, here's the thing that I think would have worked well. So you have Steve who worked with these people, put them in the roles of the things that they were supposed to do. They did it for years. The products were great. Tim Cook, come, you know, Steve Jobs is dead. Tim Cook takes over. Everything's fine because those people still know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were also going off of Steve Jobs now. And Steve Jobs do how to pick them. Yeah, but what I'm saying is they were going off of Steve Jobs' designs at that point. No, I'm no, sure. no. Steve Jobs ever designed anything. Or his ideas. I know there was stuff written down. It was, you know. it was they were his ideas per se. He was the eyeball. Because didn't he, he was have the, like four years of worth of stuff that came, was still... He was just a visionary. He was a marketing and visionary right. genius. He said, I want to make a phone. Right. Or no, initially what he wanted to make was the iPad. He even said this in one of his interviews. He said, I want, he's like, I want to make the iPad. So he said, it needs to be this, this, and this. So he sent his people out to go start making stuff. They start making stuff. They come back with some with some things. And he realizes in that moment when he felt, uh, you know, all the different, uh, like the the inertial scrolling. So when you scroll with a swipe, how it keeps going. Mm-hmm. That was something that no other device did at that time. Mm-hmm. And even if it did, it didn't do it in this particular way. Steve Jobs said that and said, you know what? Oh, my God, this is, this is a phone right here. He was the visionary. What he saw... And how he could market it and solve problems. He wasn't. He wasn't designing the stuff. Johnny, I've designed the stuff. He wasn't coding and doing all the other stuff. That was that was Scott Forstall and everyone else. Oh, he didn't code anything. It was Steve Wozniak who, who, was, who was doing a lot of the programming. Speaking of Forstall, he got forced out of Apple. He did. He basically just got... like Steve Jobs at one point. Yes, but in this particular case, I don't think that. Forstall brings enough value in the way that Steve Jobs did. Basically, that company Oh, no, died. no, no, I know. No, what I'm saying, though, is bring him back. I would I like mean, to. I mean, bring I him w- back. I would like I to. I mean, I just I was reading something. I guess he did stuff for Broadway. Broadway? Um, yeah. It, uh, he was a Broadway producer, best known for co-producing the Tony Award, winning Fun Home, and Eclipsed with his wife. Interesting. He also went to Stanford, so that yeah. explains everything. But he's now joining, it looks like... um, Yeah, Broadway producer. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. I just saw uh, that in Google. uh, Where did it go? I'm sorry. Um, Yeah, here's where to beat it. You know what? I would like to see him come back, but I think think that's what we're seeing. I just don't want to run out of time because I know we're we're close to the clock. Um, 
I think that's what worked well for that time period when it was, you know, Tim Cook was new. Now, I will give Tim Cook this. I think that the iPhone 8 is like the most perfect version that we are capable of seeing of Steve Jobs' iPhone without him being around. And to be honest with you, I think it combines a lot of the nice things about the iPhone over the years. It had the double-sided glass, right? We brought the glass back, back to the iPhone from the iPhone 4 and the 4S because the 5 and the 5S and the 6 and the 6S and the 7 all had metal backs, aluminum, mm. um, which for whatever reason made my hands sweat. And the iPhone 8 introduced like just a bunch of different things. And I really liked the iPhone 8. Overall, I think that was one of the that was one of the most refined phones. Now you have the iPhone 10 with the all-screen design, blah, blah, blah. And that's Tim Cook's attempt at his own version of the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um, what has he done now? I like it. There is some things that are driving me crazy with the thing. Um, there are some things definitely that drive me crazy with it that just don't seem as refined or sometimes half baked there's there's nothing new and that's that's all been, their phones is the same thing every year it's the same it feels you know what it's funny you could pick up an iphone 6 and it feels familiar but in a way that you don't want it to because right. iphone 6 looks old it's like why does this feel so familiar yeah in a way that it shouldn't and no promotion man they're the ones that started the promotion thing with the stupid iPad. What I don't understand is why can't they change this design anymore? I understand it's an iPhone and you want to make it look, but why? Why does it have to keep looking like this? I mean, once the screen's all screen, that's one thing, right? There's nothing else you could do about that. The notch is all another thing, but yes, I agree. Now they're going to bring back the iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 design on the iPhone 12. And I always thought that that was the more superior design. Instead of going back... Make something new. What other shape can you make it? The cor- the edges are either flat or they're round or they can they could be tapered. But honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the tapered um with with the Note 10, just because of that edge thing we talk about that edge detection touch thing. Didn't, but make it look like, look how the Samsung phone looks, right? If you look at the screen, you look how it looks. It's like wow, it's got that wow appeal. Now look at this. I mean. I mean, yeah, I don't that, disagree. the screen looks great. That That's wonderful, but it's just like, it looks, it just looks like an iPhone. It does. It doesn't, it doesn't have that wowness. No, it doesn't incite. It doesn't incite the way, but you know what? Like, it's one of those things where I think, and I think you and I both agree that the, the form factor of, of these laptops that we have, these 2015s is, is like the, the, the most optimal form factor. I mean, between the ports, between the size and shape, sure, you could make the bezel smaller. Yeah. You could. I mean, would I do I like the fact that I can get one in space gray? Absolutely. Sure, but they could have done that with it. But overall, like just in outside of color. Yes. Form wise, mm-hmm. this is the design. And honestly, Correct. if they left it like this for the rest of eternity, I would be okay with that. Yeah. I mean, it has more ports. It know, has more than ports. Than what the new ones have. It has MagSafe. It has it your has, SD, SD uh, slot. It has your SD card slot. Even if you got rid of the yeah. glowing apples, save battery life, whatever your argument is. Don't get rid of that glowing. Don't. They already, they already did. Oh, they did? Yeah, they did. All oh, the, I didn't even hear that. Yeah, 2016, 2016 MacBooks and, and on don't have glowing apples. You guys have the right to chew me out in the comment section. Um, <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> so I think that the iPhone 4. You know what they need to bring 4? back, though? Ah, wait. I have it in my pocket. You know what they need to bring back? Huh? Magnet. Yeah, the MagSafe charging. I yeah. agree. I agree. This That's came in. This comes to... in handy all the time. Yeah. So here, I don't know, for those who are watching on YouTube, here is an iPhone 4. The hell is that? It's an iPhone 4. I know it's so tiny, right? <laughs> well, I don't have my, I mean, an iPhone's about the same size. So you get the, you could see where it's come from. But I remember. Is in my, an iPod? <laughs> in my personal opinion, <laughs> for the time, the era that this came out, just oh, yeah. from a relative oh, no, perspective. it was innovative. Absolutely. This is the best design, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Now. I'm super excited for the iPhone 12 to have this design. But you know what the best part about the design of this phone, Joey? It wasn't the glass back and the ice cream sandwich. Oh, let me guess. It's buttons. the camera bumps? Yeah, the camera. It doesn't it doesn't do it. I, don't, I just hate that so much because it feels like just like a weak sauce solution for a problem that they had. Like, well, we want to make it thinner, but we can't make it, you know, the, the camera's too big. Why can't they do what Samsung did? I don't understand. Well, Samsung, I think, just just used the space better rather than making the big old square. Um, why Apple decided to go that way, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know we're what we're getting the... four on the new one. It's not four. We're getting. We're still getting three, but they're adding a lidar sensor. And it's still 
It's a, a square. bump. It's a big old square to bump, yeah. It's a big old square to so bump. So now you get to tap it all you want, and it's going to be tap, tap, tap. Oh, I'm going to be tapping. I'm going to be tapping. I have to get it for a complete review. Um, I, I'm not happy. Can you, can you, middle finger's up. I, oh, I, I'm not worried about that. I'm not. Your yeah. Foot. You know what? That's fine. Yeah, my finger was up. I was holding my <laughs> face up. I didn't do it in, on purpose. Um, so, you know, obviously, there's going to be a lot for the rest of the year for Apple. The iPhone 12 is getting delayed, too. I don't know if you heard that. Yes. Yes, I did. Um, I had a feeling that was coming up. And if it had ProMotion... And no camera bump, I would say I was fine with that. But, I mean, it is what it is. It gives me more time to do my... Maybe they're going to refine the camera bump. Make refine? It, yeah, make it bigger. Like like the Note 20. Have you seen that? Have you seen <laughs> yes. that thing? Yes. It's just, dude, it's like it's like a stack of business cards <laughs> on the back of a phone. What is that? They Can you do- imagine tapping on that thing? Oh, my God. Well, that was one of the... La- <laughs> that was one lady's review on, on YouTube. She was going to write... And- and this was a good thing. I've never actually thought about using the phone this way. Go figure. I always hold it in my hand when I do my notes uh, with the pen. But if you write down, I'm, right, this doesn't move too much. But that one, right, when you press down on it, once on the table, it's like, dunk, dunk, dunk. It's awful. It's awful. What is that? It's a phone. And it was, and it's not even copper. You know what I wish they would do for, you know, a final idea because I know we're running out of time. You know what iPhone or, or what I wish iPhone would do? Hmm. Add an Apple pad. You have the Samsung pen, but have like a skinny version of an Apple pen. So Steve Jobs hated styluses. And to be honest with you, I the only thing, and it, again, this is all in the process of the, of, of, of the complete review, right? So if, if, if you're not familiar with what my complete reviews are um, on the main YouTube channel for completing the circuit, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, this, I basically do more refined videos um, there's only two up right now, but as time goes on, I'm doing these things. I have one of the PlayStation 4 complete review. And basically, um, instead of doing reviews at the beginning of a product line to try to get it out there and not really experiencing the product, I do it at the end of the product line to tell you kind of like, if I could have had this review, this information that I have on the product now, having it over a year, two years, three years, four years, whatever, at the beginning, this is what I would say about it. And this all started with issues with laptops because you get a laptop. And Joy and I talk about this all the time. You get a laptop. You see a review for the laptop right after it comes out. Um, these YouTube channels, they come out with a, with their review. And then two years later, the laptop starts, starts having problems. Maybe even 18 months. The the, the charge port broke. Uh, it's not turning on. It's doing this. It's doing that, right? And these are all things that are like common issues. You can go to Google it and you'll find it. So it's a common problem. But again, you got the laptop off of possibly off the recommendation of a reviewer. And their whole thing was, I need to get through this laptop, say what I think about it so I can get it up so I can get the views. That bothers me, and obviously, the the whole point of the segment is, you know, to be educational and fun and stuff. But it's also to kind of point out an issue that we need to stop when you're doing reviews. It needs to be like a full winded review. So, um, with um, what what the hell was I saying before? <laughs> with, um, uh, we were talking with, about the pen. Oh uh, yeah. So with this, what I found with the pen, um, I don't use it as much as I would like, as I have learned a little bit more about what the pen can do it's cool but i would say the real only real advantage i can see to this pen because i can type something in much faster than i can write it in mm-hmm. um and even though the pen can do cool things like transcribe and do stuff like that and it, it looks cool it looks a little more official um since i can type it in it's not a time saving thing and if my hand my handwriting's pretty awful and while the phone is good at like transcribing what my hand handwriting is whatever i write in um it's pretty good um it's just it's just not as fast. So I can see my point being I can see that this the pen being wonderful if you have to mark up documents. If you're a teacher, you have to mark up students things, um you know, you're working in busy, you have to mark up an excel doc or whatever, like circle this, fix this, arrow here. In that regard I see it being a wonderful thing. It has a bunch of other gimmicks you can control the camera and stuff with it and and um and things I've never really used any of that. It has like air drawing, you can like draw in the air and so I don't think, I think the pencil with the iPad is a great experience, especially with iOS 14 or iPad OS 14, whatever you want to call it. That, the way that they did it were basically the input field, right? Your input field, your cursor's on your input field and you can write anywhere on the screen and it just puts the text in there and you don't even have to think about it. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. That's a wonderful implementation of the pencil. And obviously you can draw on Aaron's been drawn this whole time. Um, listening to us ramble on. So I think they could make the iPhone pencil compatible and i'd be okay with that 
So it's not something that comes necessarily accompanies the iPhone, but if you just so happen to with your iPad, you have in your bag, you have your pencil. At least make like what's the harm yeah. of making it? What's the yeah. harm of making it compatible? Like it literally shouldn't technically cost them very much. I, I don't know. I don't know what the hardware stuff is in the iPad. What they do to make the the, the Apple Pencil work? And that's yeah, that's I, all I got. Dash Pro motion display. Not not the first gen. Mine does. I'm yeah, sorry. yours does. Yeah, yours does. No, I get that. I understand that. And when I get my ProMotion Display iPad, I won't care. Because the iPhone still won't have it. <laughs> and so I think that about wraps up this show, guys. I did want to talk about one. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. How much time we have? I think we can squeeze in one more minute. Did you see the Xbox UI, Xbox, uh, it dropped today? Yeah, that was so fun to watch. Okay, for anyone, I'm gonna I'm going to do my best to remember because I know I haven't been remembering very well, but I'm gonna do my very best to put this link in the description. If you have time, go watch this video. If you see this episode, wherever you're hearing this episode from, go to YouTube, look up the Xbox Series X UI video that dropped today, August 21st. Or no, we're, at, we're, we're past midnight, August 20th. It dropped Thursday, August 20th. Find that about three minutes 29 seconds and it shows you and for those of you who aren't watching i'm holding up air quotes right now it shows you the xbox one the series x the series x ui well technically i mean i guess it's the xbox one ui too anyway go watch the video go leave a comment go check out our clips whatever i want to hear what you guys have to think about that video because that drove me crazy it was super clickbait because i've been wanting to see some ui stuff and more internal stuff on the game consoles than what we've seen but that's our show for today guys um, be sure to check us out on YouTube. We obviously we have our clips channel, which you can get a little, you know, you can you can find these little segments and you can leave your comments there. Um, you'll be able to find us on iTunes, on Spotify. All the links will be in the description, depending on where it is you're finding where it is you're listening to us at. Be sure to check out the main channel um, as I upload more content there. And as always, we will see you. Uh, we'll see you next week. Take care, guys.